Okay, it is 6.03, calling the meeting to order. And Clerk Perillo, can you please uh, confirm the presence of a quorum? Yes, ma'am. Mayor Shepro? Present. Thank you. Trustee Kessay? Present. Thank you. Trustee Lauk? He's here. I'll speak for Stan that this only this at one this time. Stan, can you hear us? Did he say yes? Uh, we'll move forward to the other trustees while we wait for Stan to for Stan's sound to. Trustee Biondo? Here. Thank you. Trustee Giuliano? Here. Thank you. Testing for Stan. Come in, Stan. Stan, please come in. So we see Stan. Does that count as Stan's here? No. Clerk Perillo? No, it does not yet. No, it does not. Should we text him? I'm texting him right now. You are? Mm -hmm. Call him. I think it's a phone call. Like a sand. Hmm? It's like a sand. Can you hear us, Stan? Give us a sign. Exactly. <laughs> I think the picture moved. The breeze just came in the window. <laughs> Is he on mute? I'd ask him again, Sylvia. Trustee Lauks, can you please confirm your attendance? 
Say something. something. Trustee Laux, can you yes. please yes. confirm yes. that you yes. are yes. in yes. attendance? Yeah, I heard that. Barely, barely hear it. Turn your mic, turn your speaker up maybe a little bit. Is there, can we just FaceTime him? Face or? Him or? He's not going to be on. I got you, Lauren. I can hear you. You can hear me? Yeah. We yeah. can hear you. So yeah. are you here, so Stan? You here, Stan? I can hear you, Lauren. Yeah. Can you confirm that you're present? I'm present. I'm present. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Which means we have a quorum? Means we have a quorum? Yes, ma'am, we have a quorum. Okay, and we have some feedback, have feedback, too. Is there any way to there turn that way feedback way off, Joel? Yep. Thank you. Now we'd just like now to stand to the like pledge to of allegiance. Pledge. At the risk of hearing feedback, and there is none, thank you, Jewel. I would like to call up the members of the Port Jefferson Fire Department for some recognition tonight, special recognition. Thank you. CERN? Yep. Tony? Chris, Christian, yep. thank you for being here tonight. I am going to do a little bit of, I have a little bit of notes to read through right now, just because I didn't want to leave anything out over the past um, 10 or 11 months or so of um, things that came to the fore about the work that the Port Jefferson Fire Department has been doing to help the members of our community uh, stay safe and to um, and in, in it, the selfless volunteerism that uh, takes that it takes to do this, uh, didn't want it to go unnoticed. And I and I know you get a lot of recognition out in the world, uh, in the community, but I thought it was a very important time to recognize you after the recent fire on February twenty second, um, in which you uh, really preserved the health and safety of many people in the community by. Uh, curtailing that that blaze um, in time in the time that it took for you to respond and get there, and I have sitting here and I, and this isn't anything I really like to do very often, but um, we have a, a reporter who is here who covered that story um, and is also a resident, and she she really we've been talking about this. She she really recommended this that we recognize you and because she's a member of the community and lived in that area and felt like you really protected her neighborhood so i took that recommendation without any just it was it was right it was the right thing to do and i didn't really know else how else to do it so we're doing it here um i just want to read through some bullets of some of the uh activities that you've been um responding to lately uh, March 9th, uh, the Saturday evening rainstorm, uh, whereby you deployed the, the town of Brookhaven's newly dedicated, just in the nick of time, high water rescue vehicle, um, where you responded to numerous water rescue emergencies due to the flooding conditions. Collaboration, the Port Jefferson uh, Village Code Enforcement team helped you there too, but that was um, late at night when nobody else was up except for the people who are driving through the streets that got stuck so but thank you for that um earlier early in the morning on february 22nd the fire uh that uh, took hold on east on east main street and thompson um where a two two car detached garage was fully involved with one vehicle within within and one in the driveway the um, reading off of your Facebook post, so um, ac it's accurate. The intense radiant heat caused extension uh, to the main residence as well as melted the siding to the house on the eastern exposure. And crew from E5 made an aggressive attack on the garage while L1 conducted searches of the house. Fire was located in the, in the cockloft of the house resulting in an interior fire attack. 
All occupants were able to escape without injury. However, one of your members uh, was uh, transported to Stony Brook with a minor burn to the hand. Uh, you uh, mentioned, and we are too grateful to EMS as your uh, fellow emergency response partners to um, get involved with this and, and again, come at all times of day, night uh, for any type of emergency and also to the mutual aid companies from Terryville, Setauket, Mount Sinai, Miller Place, and Stony Brook Fire Department. On January 13th, the Fire Department Engine 2 and Ladder 1 provided mutual aid to a Terryville Fire Department, New York, for a structure fire on Cool Place. That's two in one year. No? Hmm. Okay. Fortunately, everyone made it out of the house safely. No injuries were, no injuries were reported. Uh, on January 6th, Fort Jeff Fire Department provided mutual aid to Setauka Fire Department for a structure fire on Old Field Road. The crew from Ladder 1 operated a hose line in the attic and assisted with overhaul operations. Fortunately, no reported injuries. Uh, our, our fellow police department, uh, fire departments and districts nearby um, work together often through a collaborative mutual aid agreement. Um, early morning, January 5th, Fire Department personnel provided mutual aid to Terryville Fire Department for a structure fire. First arriving crews from both departments made aggressive interior attacks before transitioning to a defensive operation. The home was under construction, resulting in quick and unpredictable fire spread. Fortunately, there were no injuries. Um, on the morning of December 6th, the Fire Department R7 responded to a single car motor vehicle accident on Main Street near Franklin Avenue. Right outside of Trustee Cassay's residence, I suppose, the vehicle had struck a utility pole, splitting it at the base. The crew of R7 secured the vehicle, cleared the debris, and mitigated the fluids that leaked onto the roadway. Uh, early morning, November 28th, Portia Fire Department Engine 5 responded to a report of a vehicle fire involving a pickup truck on Perry Street. The engine crew quickly extinguished the fire without incident. Fortunately, there were no injuries to anyone. On the evening of November 21st, Portia Fire Despar Department responded to a vehicle in to the water at the Brookhaven Town boat ramp. The driver and sole occupant of the vehicle was able to self-extricate and swim to the dock. He was assisted out of the water by two Good Samaritans. The Portia Fire Department inflatable boat was launched to secure the vehicle to the winch line of Rescue 7, and the car was then winched complete out of the water in order to confirm no additional occupants and further secure the scene. Earlier that same day, Porta Fire Department R7 responded to a single car motor vehicle accident on Main Street near Myrtle Avenue. The vehicle left the roadway and struck a utility pole, split it, splitting the pole at the base. The vehicle was secured and the driver was transported to the hospital by Port Jefferson EMS. November 11th, Porta Fire Department responded to a two car motor vehicle accident on Old Post Road just west of the high school. The two vehicles collided head on, causing the Jeep to overturn. All occupants were able to self-extricate and were later transported by Port Jeff EMS to the hospital with serious but non-life-threatening injuries. The crew from Rescue 7 secured both vehicles and utilized the winch to right the Jeep before turning the scene back over to Suffolk County Police Department. On October 15, 2023, at 8.48 p.m., Port Jefferson Fire Department was dispatched to a mutual aid assist to Mount Sinai Fire Department for a report of that 12-inch water main break on North Country Road, just east of Christopher Hollow Road. The Port Jeff Fire Department High Water Rescue 22, Water Rescue 14, and, and Rescue 7 were dispatched to the call to assist. With combined efforts from Port Jefferson Code Enforcement, the EMS Mount Sinai Fire Department, and our department were Georgia Fire Department were able to shut down and secure all affected road, roadways during the length of the operation. Suffolk County Water Authority was able to successfully shut down the water main. Emergency resources were then dismissed. On October 9th, 2023, Porcha Fire Department helped rescue a beautiful Sheba named Clementine, whose paw was lodged in the drain of the bathtub. Her humans contact the fire, contacted the firehouse and the, and the crew from Rescue 7 and Ladder 1 worked to extricate Clementine from the tub. This included cutting the drain out with access from the floor below with a Dremel tool. After the hour-long ordeal, a veterinarian was able to determine that Clementine was essentially uninjured. 
July 16th, 2023, Port Jeff Fire Department was alerted to, the, to a tree down on Dark Hollow Road. Units arriving on scene discovered a very fortunate woman who was uninjured when a tree came down on her vehicle while she was driving. Additionally, there were multiple small brush fires that occurred due to downed power lines that were live. Rescue 7 worked to dislodge the vehicle while the crew from Engine 2 extinguished the fire. July 15th, Port Jeff Fire Department was alerted by the U.S. Coast Guard sector, Long Island Sound, of a vessel that struck the jetty on the east side of Port Jefferson Inlet. Port Jeff Fire Department Marine, Marine 6 responded to the scene where it was confirmed the vessel was well involved into the jetty with three victims. A rescue swimmer, swimmer was deployed from Marine 6 with the assistance of CETO Port Jefferson rigged hull inflatable. Once contact was made with the victims, it was determined that all three had suffered head and facial, facial lacerations of various degrees. In order to safely remove the victims from the jetty, Port Jeff Fire Department Inflatable 14A was launched from Anchorage Road. The rescue swimmer from Marine 6 assisted the victims one at a time into 14A, when then transported them to, which then transported them to Marine 6. Immediate care was given to the most seriously injured on Marine 6. Once all were on board, they were transported to the town boat ramp, where they were received by Port Jefferson EMS and taken to a local hospital. July 11th, 2023, on, two, on, on that evening, Port Jeff Fire Department responded to a rubbish fire on Texaco Avenue. Engine 2, Engine 5, and Brush 12 responded to extinguish the fire. Two members were treated by Port Jeff EMS for heat exhaustion. That's, that's all we have for now. <laughs> I, I, really. I know that isn't, this is, a, this is a highlight reel of you know, real emergency response and life-saving uh, initiatives. So we are so grateful to every, it's not all you do, but it was uh, some of the, the, and I know everybody sitting in this room, most everybody anyway, probably remember most of those incidents that happened because they were covered by the news. They're, they're, it's truly incredible what you all do on a voluntary basis since when 18, this is the fire department was established in 1887. So um, just your, the, the latest legacy, the three of you chiefs, right? And uh, so I just wanna say thank you and we really appreciate it. And uh, we'd like to take a photo with you if that's sure. okay. If, would you like to say anything? Um, just uh, on behalf of the fire department, I'd like to thank you Mayor, for the recognition. Uh, we certainly appreciate it. And I will relay everything that you said uh, at our next department meeting. Um, we've had a great working relationship uh, with Mayor um, Shepro, and uh, we certainly will, moving forward, uh, continue to work on that relationship. We're in constant uh, communication with her when anything is going on in the village. So, uh, again, thank you. Much we appreciate, appreciate your communication. And, yeah. and how would wonderful village residents join the fire department? You can stop down, and we, we have applications. <laughs> They're readily available. All right. Every, do you all want to come up and... Come around front. Sure. Maybe stand. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Oh, Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Come through, please. Thank you. You know, and one of the things that you don't count on is I listen to all the calls that you go to, and if somebody was cooking food and the steam set it off the alarm and another alarm tripped, and it, people don't realize the volunteers go out to all of those too, and Guilty. they're interrupting your day. <laughs> and thanks. Just shake your hand. And just a just a shout out to Mike Presta who's sitting in the back. We'll recognize the MS on another day. You no deserve word, no your word. own recognition. So thank you. 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 Okay, if there's nothing else, just kidding.
Uh, Clerk Perilla, we have some announcements, yeah? Yes, ma'am, there are two. The first one is election related concerning our upcoming election. It is expected that tomorrow we'll have up on the website our packet for prospective candidates and that packet will be available electronically on the website as well as in hard copy in Village Hall. Once we expand that section of the website, we will also have a portion for voters. So to help everyone through the process. Announcement number two is that the next upcoming Village Board of Trustees meeting will be a work session meeting beginning at 5 o'clock p.m. on April 10th. There will be a presentation by Treasurer Gafka at that meeting regarding the 2024-2025 tentative budget, followed by a public hearing regarding the fiscal year 2024-2025 tentative budget. And then we give it a couple of weeks until we vote on the budget, so the public hearing stays held open, right? Until the 24th, yes. Okay. No, you want to close it? It has to. Mic on. This one's there. The public hearing has to be closed by the 20th. So that night has to, it has to close at that public hearing. Unless you want to hold a special meeting. On the 10th, it, it, it has to close on the 10th? It has to be closed legally by the 20th. I see. You can leave the comments. Excuse me. Written comments? Yes. Written comments. Written comments. Yes, the public hearing has to be closed by the 20th. Microphone. However, however, we can accept public comment. Through the to the 24th. Yes. Okay, very good. Through the 20th, yes. Through the 20th. Yes. Please. Okay, very good. Is that the end of your announcements? Yes, ma'am. Okay. We'd like to invite Suffolk County Police Officer and uh, Assistant Chief John Barrero and uh, Jim Murdaco on up. Uh, yes, the microphone over there. We, I know we switched it up a little. Sorry. Good evening, Mayor. Good evening. Trustees, community. Uh, I'd like to just uh, uh, introduce myself. Uh, my name is Sergeant Tessarero. I'm a Suffolk County Sergeant assigned to the 6th Precinct. Um, I lead our community support unit. Um, our unit's tasked with a, a, a bunch of different things that we do. Um, we're an accessory of patrol. So obviously patrol is tasked with 911 calls, emergencies, we're their ancillary unit to follow up on community complaints, concerns, and uh, anything that we can do for the community. Um, so before I came, I, I just took a brief look uh, year over year, comparing this year to the last year in, uh, in crime info for Port Jefferson Village. Luckily, nothing's jumping off the page as a substantial increase. Um, I do acknowledge there are a few increased criminal incidents, luckily, none of which are appearing to be violent in nature as compared to last year. Um, Non-criminal incidents, we have an increase as well, um, most of which I'm observing as disturbances. So I've been made aware of um, ongoing traffic, and vehicular complaints that the community has voiced. Um, we're doing several things to, to track that and to combat that. Um, my unit has guys that are dedicated to enforcing these community complaints. We've heard a lot about high crash locations um, up and down Route 112 and into the village and out. Um, as the weather gets warmer, we have planned um, checkpoints. So tell your family members to take care of their cars and stuff. Um, we, we've been aware of disturbances with people and loud engines and, and cars disturbing the community. We're well aware. 
Um, come Memorial Day, we're adding another vehicle that, that we do year after year, uh, our whiskey unit, which is just test with Port Jefferson Village. And, and the guys over the last few years have done a phenomenal job. Um, they're another component that's solely dedicated to, to helping you guys. Um, so yeah, I guess if there's any questions or, or anything that maybe uh, I should know that could better help you guys, I'm all ears. If anyone has any uh, notes or anything to, to bring to my attention. Any questions for Sergeant Tesserero? tonight so the county police um, I just wanted to note I went to the sixth precinct community meeting and it was uh, really informative a uh, great place to you know uh, interface with uh, other you know many others uh, in both in uniform and community members and to see that some of the issues we're facing here in Port Jefferson uh, are also being faced with other communities so uh, I was, you know, highly recommend and wanted to know when the next one is so that we can let her I, I don't have a date I, I can follow up with you and give you an exact date okay. um, I, I don't have it off hand great thank you uh, I can follow up and give you that exact date and time mm -hmm. Thank right. you very much. Thanks Thank you. Will we see you again? Okay. Absolutely. All right. Hi, I'm John Barrero, Deputy Chief. Voting in for the Chief. He had a prior commitment. He's sorry he couldn't be here. Our Board of Trustees and the Mayor, I just tried to run down our chart what we've been up to. Right now we have the... Uh, <clears throat> The trailer on Pine Hill taking stats. So the people were asking, where is that at now? It's on Pine Hill Road. And we got that under control. We have an event coming up, a big event at the high school. It's called the uh, upcoming Step Step Faster Pan. Anyway, it's uh, buses will drop off at Leeds at the high school and park in the teacher's parking lot. And a lot on Spring Street, Our Lady of Wisdom. At least we'll cut through the middle school breezeway to cross the field. Teams will be picked up by buses and we'll be on hand. Spectator Park will be at the high school. That's coming up uh, March 1st, no, 29th. Next in incident reports, uh, recap on the month of February. We had a total of 44 assist. Uh, Data traffic conditions, graffiti, assist other agencies, Suffolk County PD and EMS. Summons recap for the month of February 2024. Total written was 267. Majority written for uninspected vehicles, 198. No parking standing, 151. Overtime parking, 11. Parking without a permit, 9. 25 total warnings issued, location East Main Street, Salt Middle Lot, Main Street, and Mariner's Lot. Be advised that meter parking has been suspended into the spring, and we hope to pick up the revenue when that time comes. Anybody have any questions for me? Okay, I'd like to turn on Jim Madocco, Chief. Thank you. Good evening, board. Good evening, mayor. This, this is you guys. Can hear me? Okay. Uh, the quality of life uh, unit issued uh, four FATs since the last time we met. Uh, they were in total of disorderly conducts. We focused on a different location, which was Walnut, Elm, and Perry. Uh, we continued resources at the Long Island Railroad with individuals that had nowhere to go. Uh, the individuals at times would come off the train as it being the last stop on the railroad, some had no resources or anywhere to go. Uh, we were able to provide them that information. And we did get good feedback from a few individuals that actually took the information and, and ran with it. Uh, we are continuing to meet the store owners uh, we started with the uptown area on Main Street. 
uh, with the, the feedback we got again was positive. They voiced some concerns within the certain area back by Texaco uh, Park. And we noted that uh, we are continuing the log entry and data information as far as any destroying of property. And that has been a success as well. Thank you. If you could stick around for one second, Jim, because I just wanted to um, <clears throat> let the community know that uh, in in your work as chief investigator, uh, you assisted with a, with a um, Stony Brook University uh, um, <clears throat> issues of, of theft on the campus there, where uh, the alleged was bringing um, the stolen goods back into Port Jefferson and selling them here. And you were able to identify this person, connect with the, with the Stony Brook University Police Department, and help them identify and apprehend the, the person who was alleged to have done those uh, crimes. So you, uh, we received a letter from um, Stony Brook's uh, Division of Enterprise Risk Management, um, the Deputy Chief Security Officer there. And <clears throat> he just wanted to recognize you um, to us that this was something that they really appreciate the collaboration with. And so I just wanted to let you know that that letter came in and thank you very much for your hard thank work. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other questions for any questions at all for our code enforcement theme? Has that, um, graffiti calmed down a little up Upper port. Is your mic on? Oh, I'm sorry. Has the graffiti calmed down a little bit? That was on the black building, the title building. It seemed like it would appear. They painted over. It would appear again. So uh, it, it there was an increase. Yeah. Uh, like I said, we, we had to come up with a system that would track, um, including daytime, mm -hmm. the material. And uh, that gave us more room to contact the, the store owners. Uh, that kind of trickled. It died down a little bit, yeah. and it's picking back up. Okay. So we've been in contact with the right authorities in, in certain areas to send that information over. I drove past it today, and both sides were totally black. Okay. No, Good. no, no uh, graffiti on either side. They've so. been extremely responsive. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, it, it's. I feel bad for them. Every time they turn around, they, they must have cornered the market on black paint. Yeah. They, they, like I said, they've been very responsive, yeah. and um, we're working with them, and they've been in contact with us. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, now we have a presentation, an invited presentation from the Port Jeff Chamber of Commerce and Director of Operations, Barbara Ransom. Thank you, Barbara, thank Barbara you, for Mayor. being here. The Mayor, uh, thank you, the Mayor and the Board of Trustees. Um, we were asked to um, speak tonight just to tell you about some of the great things that we're doing at the Chamber of Commerce, and we thank the uh, Board that they value and appreciate um, the Chamber because uh, I think we do add a lot to our community. So first of all is this Sunday which is Easter, and that means EB will be out there. Um, we have a parade and an Easter egg hunt, and it starts at 12 in front of Theater 3, and it's a non-mechanical, walking, old-fashioned town parade. Everyone's invited. Um, we end up in front of the Village Center where we release the hounds. Um, we have 3,800 eggs that we'll be distributing um, earlier that day in the morning, and it's a big Easter egg hunt, and then um, the EB will be there until 2 o'clock for photo ops. We're trying something new this year. We're asking the children if they're so inclined to don donate back their empty eggs um, for an Easter surprise, so we're going to try to recycle these eggs. And so it should be great fun. The weather's looking nice. It's looking like it's going to be fairly warm and sunny, and we get a huge crowd. Last year we went through um, over 250 individual pieces of chocolate um, from children that had photos with EB. So um, it's a community event. The banner's up. It's free, so we get a lot of um, activity. So all are welcome. And really, it's the kids between um, two to eight, so there you have it. 
The next major event that we're doing is April 13th. This is the 15th year we've done our Health and Wellness Fest. It is um, going to be held at the Meadow Club from 9 to 1. This is a huge event for the Chamber, and I have to tell you, I don't know what's changed. Maybe people are finally done with COVID, but we're expecting 95 tables this year. Last year, we had 75. That's a huge increase. And um, we have our four major sponsors that have been very generous and always helping us out sponsoring this event. Stony Brook Medicine, New York Cancer and Blood Specialists, our two local local hospitals, Mather Hospital and Northwell Health, and Catholic Health St. Charles Hospital. It is a free event. Um, we have smaller sponsors as well, uh, but um, it's going to be a lot of fun activities. We have um, actually a, a roller derby company coming, you know, because that's nice physical activity for health. Um, the paddle pub that some of you may know about in the village, I mean, that's good physical activity as well. Also drinking here, Lair. Um, the harmonic egg, I don't know if anybody knows about this little thing you get in and you just um for an hour. Um, the Muse painting is going to be there. Um, St. Charles Hospital, once again, is going to be providing their healthy food court. This year, we're having um, overnight oatmeal for breakfast and then acia bowls with all the toppings. And it's free and um, it's great. And we're also going to have therapy animals this year. So we have the um, Smithtown um, Blind School of Blind, however that works. Um, the last year they brought their ambassador dog, um, Kurt. Uh, we have a few other therapy dogs that are going to be there as well. So, uh, again, exciting. Um, the venue is lovely because it's out, outside a little bit if we want to go outside, and the weather, I hope, will be good. So, again, health and wellness, April 13th from 9 to 1 at the Meadow Club. From April 13th, we roll into, we know how popular all these food crawls are. So the Chamber, in cooperation with the Business Improvement District, we help um, organize three of them. Of course, the first one starts in January with the mac and cheese that sells out um, into this one. And this one's going to be a brunch. We haven't done a, we've never done a brunch per se. We've done breakfast crawls, um, but this one's a brunch from 11 to 2. And again, it is going to be April 21st. That's a Sunday. Ticket is a ticketed item. Um, it'll be $30. And we have already uh, 13 or 14 restaurants that are going to be involved. And it's not, it's, it's, it's could be beverages. Um, even Kilwins is going to be involved. So I'm not sure what they're going to be doing, but um, we should have nice participation. And it's rain or shine rain or shine, <laughs> no refunds, just to let you know on that. And um, just jumping ahead a little bit, just if you want to mark your um, calendar for June, we have Sounds on the Sound. That's going to be on the ferry. Um, it is on June 14th. That's Flag Day. It's TGIF Flag Day um, Sunset Cruise. Last year it was very popular. We had a Motown band there. It was a 19-piece um, band. They played on the top deck. We have VIP tickets and general admission tickets, and it's a great fundraiser. And the first year we had it, I couldn't tell you what lovely weather it was. Absolutely dead, drop-dead sunset. And then that night it was a um, strawberry moon. If anyone's not familiar with that, the moon rises and it's totally red until it finally gets up into the sky. And so it's a great event. So those are four um, major events that we're um, involved with. And um, thank you for this opportunity to share this with the community mayor and board. Um, quick question. Who, who's the band on Sounds on the Sound? It's a woman's name. <laughs> um, she specializes in, um, it's called Women of the 80s. Okay. So she does Pat Benatar and name a few other people. Um, okay. But she's very good and she gets up in costume and everything and I'll be on the top deck. Awesome. That sounds okay. great. All right. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you very much. Okay. Our next uh, announcement will come from Clerk Perillo. We have a public hearing this evening, and I'm asking for a resolution to open that public hearing regarding a proposed local law creating Part 1. Administrative Legislation, Chapter 7, Budget and Finance Committee of the Code of the Village of Port Jefferson. May I have a motion? Motion. Thank you. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. I think I saw Stan mouth the word aye. I'll say it aye. Okay, yes. thank you. Thank you. You got it. <clears throat>
Next. So we'd like to know if anyone from the public would like to. This is a public hearing, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're inviting any first from the trustees comment on the um, local law about the Budget and Finance Committee. This is a newly established uh, local law, Chapter 7. It's being proposed as. And um, it follows the appointment of the Budget and Finance Committee members who have met once already. Uh, the reason why we are creating this as part of the code is to uh, provide for its longevity and its continued uh, success and implementation in, in uh, village law. Any, any feedback from you, Attorney Moran? You eloquently stated it, uh, Mayor. Um, there was, there was back in, I believe, earlier in, the, in, in mid-2023, we established the committee, and it was the intent of the board to codify it in village code, and this is the process set forth. Um, if, if you compare the code um, as proposed to the charge of the board at the time when it, it was created, the committee when it was created, you'll see it's basically the same. Um, just continuing to move that committee forward and legitimize them by adding it to the code, and hopefully it'll create the longevity the board desires. And I appreciate uh, any opportunity for members of the public to become more involved in the government's decision-making processes. Um, the budget happens once a year. Uh, there's you know, the public hearing and public comment, but uh, I'm excited for the idea that there will be a group of residents and uh, maybe more accessibility from residents, uh, you know, to residents at large to be able to be a part of those, uh, the knowledge and the um, fiscal decisions moving forward. Mayor and board, if I may, under letter C of the... I can talk about this. Oh, thank you. Okay. okay. So um, as it was originally uh, um, prescribed in the um, intent of the committee, which was, as Attorney Moran mentioned, was back in the, in the summer of 2023, uh, the original uh, construct of the... Uh, committee is five members nominated and appointed by a majority of the board of trustees including the mayor and serve for two two year term expiring on june 30th i wanted to actually address that a little bit with this board to inquire as to whether you have any tolerance for uh, changing that two year term to three years and having those terms be staggered whereas the first um the first uh committee that's been established are all in for one year from here forward two, two will be one year two will be two years and one will be three years so that there is a staggered transition and appointments so we aren't really trying to fill uh, replacements of this committee with and as replacements to this board of trustees may occur so we really don't want that to coincide with the change of the board of trustees, whether or not the board of trustees changes, it's just uh, similar to many of our other committees. There are a staggered number of years that the committee serve. In fact, we just didn't we just codify the um, Parks and Recreation Advisory Council to have additional staggered years and moved the number of years to serve from five to three, something like that. So it's a little more realistic to serve for three years because you just sort of get your momentum and your you're moving ahead, you're learning the ropes, yeah. learning the ropes as, as Trustee Biondo said. So this now, if, if we can, we all, if the board has uh, interest in doing this and if we get public feedback or if we don't get public feedback that expresses a difference of opinion, would we be able to change this description to that tonight? As presented by the mayor, the staggering of the terms. Yes. I would not consider a change that would require um, republic, republishing the notice and having a separate public hearing. Okay. So I would say we'd be able to make those amendments, and when it's filed with the Secretary of State, it will reflect the changes as set forth by you, Your Honor. Okay. Any feedback on that from the board? I think it's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. The microphone's on? Yes. <laughs> What's the speaking into it? I think it's a very good idea. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. The appointments. 
they're not beholden to one board that will always right. change. Correct. That's... Yeah. Okay. Any any comments from the public? Hearing none. Um, um, I have. Some... Okay, Stan. I think going forward, I think it's an excellent idea. Um, it comes in line with all of our other committees, staggered terms, three-year maximum on a term. Somehow, if we can get to that point. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that feedback. Okay, uh, hearing no further feedback, um, time to ask for a resolution to close the public portion regarding the proposed local law. Do we have a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Clerk Perillo, will you read the next uh, resolution, please? Yes, Mayor. Thank you. Resolution adopting the proposed local law as attached and amended, creating Part 1, Administrative Legislation, Chapter 7, Budget and Finance Committee of the Code of the Village of Port Jefferson. May I have a motion? Motion. Thank you. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes, he did. Right now, uh, we'd like to invite the public uh, to address the Board of Trustees. If we have any public uh, comment this evening, this would be the time to uh, take a, your place at the microphone. Just state your name and address for the record, please. Janice Fleischman Eaton, 23 Old Post Road East, Port Jefferson. Thank you. Thank you, Chef Bro. Um, I want to thank you for your hard work. I've um, decided to come and talk with you. I added a comment that um, besides what I planned when I opened the, um, the Times main section today, it says the couple rescuing seals trapped in debris as millions watch. And there was a statistic, a staggering statistic um, included that said um, it is estimated that 21,000 pieces of plastic are in the ocean for every person on the planet. So I was happy to talk about this because Port Jefferson's doing good things to try to mitigate that. I understand the CAC has taken on um, uh, a position to uh, restrict single-use plastics at the Village Center for events. I think we're moving towards that. Um, so um, it's an overwhelming problem, but li little steps help. I I'm in a local environmental club called Eco League. And um, we have sanctioned three of our establishments in Port Jefferson that encourage um, you to bring your own containers. So to decrease single use plastics in our village and Tiger Lily, uh, South um, Down uh, Coffee and locals all have a BYO, be, bring your own sticker in their window or in a frame to let people know that you know encourage you to bring your own for beverages. Um, that's the closest we could. Um, that's the most we think we could do um, because of the Department of Health, their restrictions on these kinds of things. Um, the the original reason why I wanted to come and speak to you is um, about the problem that um, I share with probably everyone in in our community, and that's safe walking. Um, uh, it's it's lacking. In, in Port Jeff. I live on the east side. I live on Old, Old Post Road East um, near Laurel and Old Post. And um, you're familiar with that area. And um, I've been walking, I, I moved into that home in 1990. And I've been walking with or without my dog um, on that street and have had multiple scary moments with cars. Um, and what's happening, it, it's gotten even worse because the debris, the, the, the foliage has 
encroached in um, between Laurel going east to the Riviera um, if there was ever a shoulder in the first place. So I was walking there today and then I noticed like over the years there's been asphalt curbs that have been uh, put on either side. They've crumbled over the years many times so the answer is not asphalt. Um, and then that asphalt creates um, kind of um, falling like almost holes that I noticed. So if I had to jump away from a car, I would probably break, break my ankle on the side of the road where the where it's really um, grasses that are cut between the road and the tree line on the on maybe north side of, of Old Post East. Um, so, you know, the obvious reason why we need sidewalks is for safety, right? We, there, Suffolk County has the highest rate of injury and death with pedestrian or bicyclists and cars out of the, in the whole state. Um, so it's a dangerous thing to walk out. I mean, I, I'm, I, I'm not sure, but I would think that people don't walk to the village or to the beach because there are no sidewalks, no sidewalks to push a carriage, no sidewalks for your kids to ride their bikes so that we could be outdoors moving. Um, and the suburbs were engineered for the cars. They, you know, they weren't engineered for people to walk. But we know now that that's not good for our health in many ways. Um, so, the, so many reasons, you know, I, our bodies are actually engineered to move. And we know that the sitting is the new smoking. So I just wanna make, help make our village healthier. I want it to be safe to walk. Um, I, I would hope that all the other reasons such as less cars on the road, less emissions, um, less parking problem. We don't have to bring our cars downtown. Um, will all help um, move this along um, and not wait for, you know, some terrible accident to happen before we start making slides. I just, I do hope also that the, the paths or, or however we try to move ahead with this um, would be with um, some type of material that is also good for drainage because um, I would, I wouldn't want more pavement because we have the problem with our aquifer and the drainage and the flooding and on and on you know with with those problems too okay. so um thank you for your time and attention and um thank you for your care and concern thank you janice i'll just share very briefly uh, the village did invest in a walkability study sort of a first step in the right direction um to this uh to janice's point uh, she's very much not alone in the desire to have more walkable, bikeable, joggable streets. And so uh, the village had essentially an assessment of uh, the main ar arterial uh, roads throughout all of the neighborhoods in Port Jefferson. Um, so not just the commercial districts, but also going out, you know, uh, think about Myrtle Avenue, um, Old Post, uh, you know, uh, Oakwood down uh, and then connecting essentially all of our main hubs. So uh, our parklands, our beaches, uh, the transport hubs. And so they assessed all the roads. And the next step is, uh, I, know I just sat down a number of weeks ago with a village planner to introduce him to the study that was done. And so um, the, the board and uh, planning department moving forward, will get to look at that assessment and hopefully take the next steps uh, seeking grant funding to start going looking for low hanging fruit um, and the most highly foot trafficked areas to make them safer for our residents. Thank you for that. Other public comments tonight? Yes. After this. Good evening, everyone. Julie, you good with this mic? Okay. Good evening, board. Members of the public, my name is Kevin Wood. I'm 61 years old. I am an employee of the Village of Port Jefferson. 
hired here as a civil servant as the position of municipal parking administrator coming up on seven years. Uh, July 17th, 2024 would, would be seven years. My position is not an appointed position. I not, do not serve at the pleasure of the mayor. Rather, I serve the incorporated village of Port Jefferson, its taxpayers, residents, businesses, and ultimately serve this board as a whole. I'm married 35 years. I have four wonderful children, two of which are here present tonight. And I have two watching the live stream. I also have my wonderful grandson who was born 10 months ago who was being very quiet in there, and I'm very proud of him. I serve as vice president of the New York State Parking and Transportation Association and plan to be president in January of 2025. On Tuesday, March 19th, at approximately 10.30 a.m., I was verbally told by the clerk and council that due to budgetary reasons, my position would be abolished, my position as municipal parking administrator. This news was and still is devastating to me and my family. I have close to seven years in municipal government. I had planned on retiring at 65, like most people tried to do. That would be 10 years of service, only three more years in which to do so. I know this board and many people in this room know my work ethic. I only know one speed to get it done. I think anybody in this room could attest to that. Let's get it done. I'm extremely passionate about anything I do professionally. And so from 2017 until last Tuesday, I continued to make the very challenging park environment we have in Port Jefferson here the very best it can be. And we do have one of the most challenging parking environments in the nation. I have suggested and successfully implemented countless policy, suggested policy, technological changes that has put Port Jefferson on the national attention meter of a positive forward-thinking parking environment. In fact, Port Jefferson Village processes 250,000 transactions per season. That's only an eight-month season, 250,000 sessions. There is no other village on Long Island that even comes close to that. We have a limited number of spaces, and I won't go into the complexity of our system, but suffice to say it is extremely complicated and busy. There is no reason why the municipal parking administrator that existed before my arrival would not stay. The village needs and deserves a dedicated parking administrator. As we enter a new parking season, which is right upon us, I was more than prepared to open managed parking. And as usual, with full cooperation, newly formed parking committee, the head is who was sitting right here, we had talked many times about changes, policies with myself, the parking committee head, Andy Freeling, head of building, and we were coming to consensuses, and it was moving forward. Unfortunately, these changes and resolutions have not yet been presented to the board, and I say unfortunately for two reasons. One, managed parking provides the following benefits. And again, I do not want to go into an educational process of managed parking. First, it provides turnover. We need turnover in this village because we have so many, so little spaces. One example of that here in March is Castaway opening. There's an incredible amount of people parking in the Castaway uh, streets there, and so we need to manage that parking. And the second is to bring revenue into the village. Revenue is not a dirty word in this village or any other village, we need revenue to come in. This is revenue that you, the taxpayer out there, do not have to pay, comes in through visitors. So as I stated before, the primary reason I was given to abolish my position is budgetary. So let me state openly and honestly, of course I want this board to vote to keep my position in place and therefore my job. There isn't a person alive or in this room that wouldn't want the same. But let me cite a communication that has come to me as of late so we can try to fully understand what might be happening here. If the reason for abolishment is truly budgetary, wouldn't this board accept an almost never before heard concept, which is a government employee asking or 
allowing me to reduce my salary. Unheard of. I've never heard that. To reduce my salary to something that they think might be more reasonable. Why can't we go down that road and talk about that? That allows us to keep the great program we have, my experience, which is unmatched, and I can put food on a table for my family. Some others have asked me, why abolish your position, Kevin, to save on the salary? Why not take two or three percent from all the employees of the village? We have less than 60. We're a team, right? Let's everybody meet the woes that apparently we're in a budgetary woe. We're having problems, so let's band together and everybody pitch in. Why is it my position that's being abolished? I know at home when we have budgetary problems, we do things like cut premium channels that affects all six people at home, or we go out to dinner less. I try not to point out any one person in my family and, and uh, take away from them only. That would start a riot. Um, so, so we think in those terms, and we try to be a team. This, this village is a team. It's a small village. It should be a team. We should be there for each other. So if the board's communicating tough times, if so, is it offering a cost savings that don't affect the livelihood of a single department head, myself, with an incredible, incredible amount of experience, expertise, and the proven ability to bring in revenue, therefore protecting the resident's pocketbook, and quite honestly, keeping the salaries of other people? My department is one of the few departments that it's actually, if you were to run this village as a business, is profitable. Not a dirty word. It's just the truth. Parking brings in good revenue. It can help the village wholly, as a whole. Just a short little amount of some of the accomplishments that I've accomplished in the last seven years. Um, I've created a digital revenue before the pandemic that is resulting in up to 81% of parkers paying by their cell phone. This is important because the village never has to put out money for meters, paper, CDMA costs. All those costs are completely abolished. It's simply a cost of the revenue coming in. It's absolutely amazing. It's, the, it's what's happening in the parking industry, but we got there first. I was in Stony Brook yesterday hosting a parking seminar, and I'm looking at what Stony Brook wants to accomplish, and I'm going, wow, I we started that four years ago. The Village of Port Jefferson already did this, and Stony Brook's getting to it now. Be proud of that, everybody. You had somebody that brought this to the table four years ago. I oversaw the complete build-out of the first downtown parking lot in 50 years, the Barnum parking lot. I supported keeping that lot free for employees. It is free today, of course, with the help of the board, and, and then donning that a free lot. Yes, of course, you approve that. But we're doing the right thing. We're getting employees to places that, are, that customers should be in and not employees. Technological improvements included lot counters, EV chargers, we were the first. Text to help, we're the first. Merchant billing, we're the first. Security cameras in every lot, we're the first. The new ALPR system and pay-by-play technology, we are also the first. We did it before anybody did it, and it's only going to get better. I founded and managed the New York State's uh, first parking ambassador program. This parking ambassador program is where I interviewed and hired Port Jefferson high school students. We didn't go outside. We went to only Port Jefferson high school students. Trustee Biondo, your son was one of them. He enjoyed it. He told me that. What's incredible is to get notes back from, th they're in college now, and say they say to me, some of my communication skills, the reason why I do so well in college, I'm not saying the only reason, but they were able to get out there and communicate, and it's part of them growing up and maturing, and it's, it's wonderful that we're able to do that. There's a ton of work to be done here. The season, just the season alone, manage parking agreements, deciding what to do with the LIRR lot, just so much work in parking that may not be seen to the average person. It is hugely complicated. It takes somebody to negotiate and bring to the board what we're up against. We should be planning 10 years from now, 10 years from now in parking. 
there's a lot of details and a lot of background going on here, and I do not want this to be an educational place. There will be a time and a place for that. So in closing, I thank you for listening to me, and I do thank my family for being here in support. And I thank everybody that really cares about what I'm about to say. <clears throat> I very much appreciate the board fully hearing from not only me, but others in the community, and ultimately coming to an agreement to keep me employed here in the incorporated village of Port Jefferson. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Sure. Good evening, Mayor, um, Deputy Mayor, and Trustees. Thank you for um, for having this meeting tonight. Um, I had like a small little request. Um, so, um, oh sure, Lisa um, Jager, and I'm at One Jefferson Landing Circle in Port Jefferson Village. So um, I'm actually going to kind of piggyback on the um, the sidewalk thing or along Old Post Road. So it was kind of a good opportunity, and I've been wanting to do this for like. 20 something years. So I actually um, I made a copy for you to see what I'm talking about. If you wanted to do it. So I live at the corner of um, Jefferson Landing and Old Post Road. So I'm very familiar with where she's talking about. I think I know where you live also. Um, and I can't tell you how many times I've almost hit people coming around that corner from Laurel going down the hill towards Old Post Road and people are walking there. It's very dangerous. Anybody who lives here, I'm sure you know the, the, the location. So I'm actually here to petition for a stop sign at Jefferson Landing and Old Post Road. And I, I'm, I'm backing this up with some real factual stuff. So um, back in 1996, Jeremiah Zuli was getting his mail out of his mailbox at number for Jefferson Landing, which is the second house on the right-hand side as you're coming up, and he was struck by a vehicle and he broke his leg, went to the hospital. So this is going back um, that far. In 2006, I was gardening down by the bottom of my driveway and somebody coming up the hill almost hit me and my dog came out into the, like, the apron of the street and they hit and killed my dog when we first moved here. So, yeah, my little Pippa. So anyway, um, but... Uh, in the past 15 years, we've had, so I live up on the hill. So in the fi past 15 years, we've had three flipped cars, um, a motorcycle going down the hill where the rider was seriously hurt, and we actually drove him to the hospital. Um, countless, I'm also here on behalf of um, also the, um, the admin for the Port Jefferson Village Animal Advocates um, on Facebook. So um, we are actually um, a group that um, tries to protect our wildlife and to try to keep the feral cat population under control. Uh, and I'm, I also have a full rehab at my house, uh, Jaeger's Run Animal Rescue, where, um, where we rehabilitate animals that are injured here in the village um, and get them back out into the wild if we can. So um, countless deer and turkey and other wildlife have been run over in that area. Um, so the problem that we're having is if anybody knows um, Old Post Road. Um, this is Old Post Road right here and going um, going up into the village. And this is the left-hand turn that you have to make to come onto our block. And I'm guilty of this also. Um, as you come up to this spot, if you don't see anybody coming, you gun it and you go flying up Jefferson Landing. And if we had a stop sign, that would negate that. That would keep people from doing that. Um, we have right up the block from there, we actually have three stop signs. Um, we have, there are redundant stop signs actually. <clears throat> One is at the corner of Old Post Road and Laurel. Um, and uh, Sorry, Old Post Road and Laurel. Old Post Road and Puritan and Old Post Road and Thompson. They're like less than 100 feet from one another. And it's like you gotta stop and then you, you, and then you gotta stop and then you gotta stop, but you have that, that area, it's not even when they're coming up to come up Jefferson Landing, when people are coming down Old Post Road, they pass Laurel and they cut that curve. And if there's anybody walking there, it, it's really super dangerous. And it would negate, um, I actually, just out of you know, context, I decided to just drive home from work and go down that 
curve at a pretty nice rate of speed. And I was actually doing almost 40 miles an hour when I approached that curve. And that's without thinking and that's without being in a rush. So even if you're at 30 miles an hour and you cut that curve, if there's somebody coming out of Jefferson Landing, you, it's, there's going to be an accident. And this is why we have a problem. Once you pass Jefferson Landing and start going down to, towards Crystal Brook Hollow Road, when that's icy down there, that's where we flipped three cars have flipped over the past. I've been there for about 27 years now. Um, here's the other thing. Um, the late bus drops my granddaughter off at the corner of Old Post Road and, Road and Jefferson Landing. She gets off there and then he leaves and she's got to cross over Jefferson Landing to get to my house. And if there's a car coming the other way, the bus doesn't necessarily wait for her. She's, you know, she's, there's no cars coming. He just goes and she's got to cross the street. So that's kind of dangerous also. Um, the other thing is there's a lot of young um, teenagers in the landing. They have parties up there. Um, and a lot of the young kids who are 13, 14, 15 have those electric scooters now. And they're actually leaving our house and going down to the bottom of the landing and actually t riding these scooters <clears throat> and their bicycles on Old Post Road. And it's just, it's super dangerous. And I just think if there was a stop sign there coming from both directions, people who ride that, that road indirectly will slow down approaching them. So, um, so I'm really petitioning for a, a stop sign there. Maybe we can move one from the other, you know, Anyway, um, I also wanted to, um, I'm also here representing um, Jaeger's Run Animal Rescue. Um, the last administration um, had budgeted us $3,000 for something we called a TNR program. It's called a Trap Neuter Release Program. So those of you who I'm sure know of a neighbor who feeds an outside cat somewhere because they're everywhere. <clears throat> and um, and uh, I'm a 501c3 federally um, recognized um, animal rescue here on, on, in Port Jefferson. Um, and although I do mostly wildlife, um, I do work with the TNR program with the town of Brookhaven. But the problem is, is they run out of money by like the middle of August. And we have village residents here that um, call us all the time and ask us if we can help them. There's feral cats in their neighborhood. So we push them through the Brookhaven um, TNR program, but unfortunately, it gets to a point where they run out of money and then come August, September, they're having their second litter and those kittens are growing up and they're not fixed and they're having a litter. And believe me, it can really, really get out of control. So um, <clears throat> I wanted to just, we're having budget meetings and I'm asking for a TNR program, um, but I wanted to know if that would, if you would consider that again for this year um, and if there's any money still left in that fund, we have about $800 in, in um, receipts from 2023. But I would like to keep that program open for the, for the village, if that's possible. That's it. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Barbara Ransom, 409 East Broadway, Port Jeff. I wasn't planning on coming up here and speaking, but after uh, listening to um, Lisa, um, just for my uh, home uh, at 409 East Broadway, we've lost two animals by the, by the road, a cat and a dog. Um, we've had a car crash into our gate and wall. Thank God for the wall. We've had a neighbor across the street had a car go through their hedge up into their porch. Um, numerous accidents on East Broadway. I don't disagree with Lisa as far as possibly a stop sign, but the bottom line is I think the uh, village needs to look into traffic calming measures. Um, stop signs don't, don't work because people aren't using them. I can stand in front of the stop sign at the intersection of East Broadway and Be um, Beltaire Road. They blow it. They don't, they don't even, they don't stop. They just slow down so they can make the turn. That's the only reason why they're slowing down is to make the turn. So um, it's enforcement and traffic calming measures um, and, and um, the bike, the kids on the, on the scooters with the helmets or not helmets flying down the hill on East Broadway. We've all seen it and all around the village, someone's gonna get hurt. That's it, thanks. Thank you. 
Any other public comments tonight? Sir? Hello, my name is Victor Abrams. Um, I'm from New Jersey, 218 Bergen. Um, I'm here on behalf of, of to support my friend, uh, Kevin Wood and to keep his position. Um, I've been here before he was here and to see him change the parking aspect the way he did, uh, he did a tremendous job. I have to say that he, he, he's very innovative, um, to go into the park mobile app. He was very forethought. He thinks he thinks ahead. He really does. He thinks ahead, and uh, I commend him on that. He does a fantastic job. Um, I've learned a lot from him as well. He's very technical. He's very innovative. He looks at Port Jefferson and he looks looks at the aspects of what how he can make it better. Or like we had a. Uh, uh, 16 16 or 17 parking kiosks he pulled some of he he took some of them out because they weren't they weren't being productive so he went to the parking app and he he made all these changes i mean it's unbelievable the the, the stuff that he does it's remarkable it really does um i can't say anything more about the man but but He's fantastic at, at his job and what he does, and he's passionate about it and makes me want to be involved with your community as well. And I, I, would, I would like to, uh, to, to be involved with cleanups and maybe a beach cleanup or something like that. As far as, as, far as metric, the, the parking industry that, I'm, that I deal with and I deal with him, um, we're bringing up new products that are ticketless. So there's... It, it reduces the 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 need to spend money for tickets and stuff like that. So it's just a it's a good thing, and I appreciate you listening to me. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jason Contino. I'm the uh, pastor of Harborview Christian Church. 315 East Main Street, um, and I am a close uh, personal friend with Kevin Wood for over uh, 30 years now, um, and I consider myself to be uh, his spiritual leader. Um, a little late getting here because I was at Mather Hospital with somebody who uh, just received some, some really tough news today, and I, in listening to what, what I heard of Kevin, I, I would just beseech you, I would, I would ask you to just see if in some way, as the, the mayor, the deputy mayor, and as trustees, if there's any way that you could make it so that this man could keep his job. I, I think that, that the world has enough hurt. The world has enough, um, enough rough things going on. And in a small village like this, when we do see somebody um, who, who I feel comes to work and looks to, to put in an honest day's work and looks to do the right thing for his village, for the businesses, for my church, where we have between 80 and 100 people with, with no parking on a Sunday. Um, it means a lot to know that I have somebody like him who's, who I feel is looking out for the better interest of, of this uh, community, as I do, as I believe that each and every one of you do. So I just want to speak on his behalf. I thank you for the opportunity. I am a retired uh, detective. I was a nurse before that. I worked in the operating room and I went to seminary and recently became a pastor a few years ago. I, I believe that I am a good judge of character and uh, I would not be here um, on Holy Week the busiest week of the year to uh, to stop and speak for somebody if I wasn't absolutely certain that I was speak, I'm speaking on behalf of someone very special. So thank you for the opportunity, Mayor and Trustees. Thank you. Barbara Sabatino, 2 Westview Avenue. Um, 
From what Mr. Wood said, the position is being eliminated. Um, I'm, I'm actually asking that question because the parking is so complex nowadays. I can't see uh, eliminating the position without something else taking its place. And I would like to know from the, the board uh, what is going to replace the parking administrator position. It just seems too complex to um, have nobody running it. I mean, has have you gone that far to talk about what's going to replace it? Thank you for your comment. I'm sure the board, if it decides to move in any direction, will fully vet it in this room. So I would ask you to just stick around and watch. Okay, so nothing has even been decided yet about the elimination of the position. I, I All I said was, you're in public comment, you made your comment, the board, when it decides to act, will act in this room publicly, and if it, whatever way it decides to go, we'll fully lay out the plan in this room. Okay, well, let me just voice my, um, my opinion that parking has become very complex technologically, uh, that we get our parking stickers through our license plates, uh, a lot uh, is done online or on the phone. People can pay on the phone. And it really seems to me that there should be an administrator taking care of all the little details. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other? Um, public comment tonight. Okay, hearing none. Clerk Perlow, what is next on the agenda? Uh, next, Mayor, we have a motion to enter into executive session at 724 to discuss pending litigation and the specific performance of a particular employee. May I have a motion? Motion. Thank you. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Going into executive session. Here. I'm going to carry the tea. Carry hmm? stand. <laughs> Let's start.
Okay. Uh, Clerk Perillo, do you want to call us back um, out from executive session? A motion. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Mr. Laux? Yes, I. Okay. Thank you. Motion carries. Would you like to start reading off the resolutions? Yes. Um, may we have a motion, please, to take resolution number 39-32724 out of order? Motion. Second. And on resolution. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion, Aye. Ca motion carries. Thank you. Resolution number 39-32724. Whereas the village of Port Jefferson has determined that for reasons of efficiency and economy, it shall abolish the civil service title of municipal parking administrator and eliminate the title of municipal parking administrator from the village budget. And the employee currently in that title shall no longer be on the village payroll effective April 30th, 2024. And whereas the village policy provides that employees whose employment is terminated do not receive full payment for their accrued time and whereas due to the unique circumstances, the village is amenable to paying the incumbent employee currently in the title of municipal parking administrator accrued time. Now therefore be it resolved that the employee currently in the title of municipal parking administrator will receive payment for all accrued hours of sick time, all accrued hours of vacation time, and all accrued hours of personal time through April 30th, 2024, paid at his current rate of pay. May I have a motion? So moved. Thank Second. you. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Discussion. Uh, discussion. No. Yep. Um, yeah, I just want to acknowledge Kevin's service to the village since uh, 2017. and want to thank him for all of his innovation and spirit and vision that he brought to the village during this time. Thank you. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, um, and so just I just want to put on a notice for next um, the next agenda of the work session that we will articulate um, and discuss how roles will be absorbed how the, how the role will be absorbed and allocated uh, going forward with uh, the utilization of current uh, employees and and various departments. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Ready? Yes. Thank you. Resolution number one, three, two, seven, two, four. Resolution approving the minutes of the February 28th, 2024 and March 13th, 2024 meetings of the Board of Trustees of the Village of Port Jefferson. May I have a motion? Motion. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Resolution number two, three, two, seven, two, four. Resolution establishing two village voter registration days to be held at Village Hall, 121 West Broadway, Port Jefferson, New York, 11777 as follows. From 12 o'clock noon through 5 o'clock p.m. on Thursday, June 6, 2024. And from 12 o'clock noon through 5 o'clock p.m. on Saturday, June 8, 2024. And further authorizing the payment of an $18 per hour wage rate for each election inspector working on the village voter registration days. May I have a motion? Motion. Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Resolution number three, 32724. Resolution approving the attached resolution for the June 18th, 2024 village general election regarding the waiving of election inspector village residency requirements. May I have a motion? Motion. Motion. Second. Huh. All in does favor. It, does this just want to be discussed for the, um, uh, as far as what this means and why for those who missed our last meeting? Uh, sure. Would you like to explain that just a little bit, Clerk Perillo? Uh, yes, thank you. Um, we had discussed that our election inspectors will be coming from the Suffolk County Board of Elections list. If we find there will be additional 
election inspectors appointed as well as alternates if we find that village residents are not there aren't village residents available on the list more than we have now then this is a resolution that waives that residency requirement Thanks. you're welcome resolution number four three two seven two four Resolution appointing the following as election election inspectors for the June 18th, 2024 village general election at a pay rate of $18 per hour. James Bell, Constance Burns, Leslie Chesley, Wayne Chesley, Alan M. Ebert, Elaine T. Frieda, Thomas O'Neill, and Randolph Russ. May I have a motion? Motion. Do we have a second? Second. Uh, do we want to discuss this for a second, too? Just a, a brief explanation, because we discussed this at our work session. Um, these uh, candidates came off of the the approved Suffolk County uh, Board of Elections inspector list, correct? Correct. And that uh, there are other um, candidates who may be still able to be qualified or be on that list yes. um, and can be utilized, because this isn't the the entire amount of people that we need for the election. Is that correct? That is correct. And so go ahead. These are all village residents. These are. Yes. 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 Yep. And the, the majority of them have worked our elections in the past. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. All in favor. Aye. 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 Motion carries. <clears throat> Resolution number five, three, two, seven, two, four. Resolution ratifying the hiring of Nicholas Owens as a seasonal groundskeeper one at the Port Jefferson Country Club at a wage rate of $18.27 per hour, effective March 7th, 2024. May I have a motion? Motion. Do we have a second? Second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Resolution number six, 32724. Resolution ratifying the hiring of Matthew Owens as a seasonal groundskeeper one at the Port Jefferson Country Club at a wage rate of $18.27 per hour, effective March 7th, 2024. May I have a motion? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Resolution number seven, 32724. Resolution ratifying the hiring of David Children as a code enforcement officer in the Code Enforcement Bureau at a wage rate of $20.90 per hour, effective March 18th, 2024. May I have a motion? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Resolution number eight, 32724. Resolution ratifying the hiring of Alvaro Antonio Nunez Almonte as a seasonal laborer at the Port Jefferson Country Club at a wage rate of $21.50 per hour, effective March 14th, 2024. May I have a motion? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Resolution number nine, three, two, seven, two, four. Resolution ratifying the hiring of Michael Bowman as a seasonal laborer at the Port Jefferson Country Club at a wage rate of $22 per hour, effective March 14th, 2024. May I have a motion? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Resolution number 10, 32724. Resolution ratifying the hiring of Saul Garcia as a seasonal laborer at the Port Jefferson Country Club at a wage rate of $23.50 per hour, effective March 14th, 2024. May I have a motion? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion Thank carries. You. Resolution number 11, 32724. Resolution approving the hiring of seasonal part time staff members at the Port Jefferson Country Club for the 2024 season, effective March 29th, 2024, per the attached memorandum from Jake Anderson, dated March 18th, 2024. May I have a motion? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Resolution number 12, 32724. Resolution ratifying the hiring of seasonal part time staff members at the Port Jefferson Country Club for the 2024 season with the effective dates as noted for the attached memorandum from Patrick Sullivan dated March 20th, 2024. May I have a motion? Motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Resolution number 13, 32724. Resolution accepting with regret the resignation of Ruth Gately as a part time clerk at the Village Center, effective March 15th, 2024. May I have a motion? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Just Thank for the you. record, Trustee Laux is raising his yes, hand. I, I, okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Resolution number 14, 32724. 
Resolution accepting with regret the resignation of Joseph Sanzano as a part-time planner in the building and planning department effective March 28th, 2024. May I have a motion? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Nay. Just kidding. Resolution. Aye. He's going anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's going to go anyway. He's going anyway. <laughs> Resolution number 15, 32724. Resolution appointing Lee Rosner as a member of the Village of Port Jefferson Planning Board to fill the balance of the term of Louis Bukowski, which term expires on June 30th, 2027. May I have a motion? Motion. If that was a motion, I'll second it. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Resolution number 16, 32724. Resolution appointing Daniel Siegel as an alternate member of the Village of Port Jefferson Planning Board to fill the balance of the term of Lisa Harris, which term expires on June 30th, 2027. May I have a motion? I have a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank, thank you. Resolution number 17, 32724. Resolution approving the addition of not more than four and one half hours per week to the schedule of Senior Club Coordinator Beth Rothstein as an independent contractor at a pay rate of $40 per hour, effective March 27, 2024, with the timing of the ending date to be consistent with the corresponding Town of Brookhaven Community Development Block Grant. May I have a motion? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Thank you. Resolution number 18, 32724. Resolution accepting the attached quotation submitted by Fireworks by Grucci in the amount of $29,425 for the annual 4th of July fireworks performance to be held on July 3rd, 2024, with a rain date of July 6, 2024, and with the $29,425 to be expensed from line item number A, 755.04, celebrations. May I have a motion? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Resolution number 19, 32724. Resolution ratifying the approval of attendance of Andrew Freeling at the New York State Parking and Transportation Association Spring Lunch and Learn event at Stony Brook University from 9 o'clock a.m. through 3 o'clock p.m. on March 26, 2024, at a cost of $75 to be expensed from line item number A3320.4, managed parking operating expense. May I have a motion? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Resolution number 20, 32724. Resolution approving the attached contract between the Village of Port Jefferson and the Port Jefferson Rowing Club in the total amount of $22,500, payable as $2,812.50 per month for the eight month term of the contract for the use of a portion of Centennial Beach as specified in the attached contract. May I have a motion? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Resolution number 21, 32724. Resolution ratifying the approval of the submission of a grant application by the Village of Port Jefferson Tree Committee to the New York State Urban Forestry Council in the amount of $1,000 to assist the Tree Committee in working towards the attainment of tree city status. May I have a motion? Motion. Second. You want to mention a little bit about this, Rebecca? Uh, so the uh, newly formed tree committee successfully put together an application um, to the Tree City USA organization uh, and was granted the thousand dollars to uh, host a uh, Port Jefferson Village's first annual Arbor Day celebration. Um, this will be held uh, just before our second April meeting of the month, uh, so at five o'clock. Uh, that evening, uh, so you can attend there and then come over here. Uh, there will be presentations um, by uh, elected officials. Uh, by We're going to have a student uh, come and, and do a reading, and we'll also be planting two trees purchased under this grant uh, in the uh, Maple parking lot behind Oldfields and, and Billy's there, um, and also giving away tree saplings to attendees. So please do join us. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Resolution number 22, 32724. Resolution approving the event permit application submitted by Brooke Oliveri on behalf of the Long Island Health Collaborative for the use of the walkway at Harborfront Park from 9 o'clock a.m. through 12.30 p.m. on May 18th, 2024 for the annual Walk with a Doc event. May I have a motion? Motion. Second. All in favor? 
Aye. Motion Thank carries. You. Thank you. Resolution number 2332724. Resolution approving the event permit application submitted by Cindy Court on behalf of Mather Hospital for the closing of specified village streets and the provision by the village of Port Jefferson of traffic control and code enforcement personnel from 8.30 a.m. through 3 o'clock p.m. on May 19th, 2024 for the annual Mather Hospital Northwell Health Walk. May I have a motion? Motion. motion. Oh. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Resolution number 24, 32724. Resolution approving the event permit application submitted by Angeline Judex on behalf of the Long Island Explorium for the use of specified portions of the Port Jefferson Village Center and specified portions of Harborfront Park and the corresponding park area from 10 o'clock a.m. through 5 o'clock p.m. on June 8, 2024 for the annual Maker Fair. May I have a motion? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Now you said, it's just clarification, you said corresponding park area or parking area? It's written parking. So par parking. Parking, okay. Yes, thank you. Resolution number 2532724. Resolution approving the request of Jordan Russo on behalf of the New York Horseshoe Crab Monitoring Network of the Cornell Cooperative Extension Marine Program to utilize the parking area off Crystal Brook Hollow Road with the purpose of collecting data related to horseshoe crabs per the attached 2024 horseshoe crab survey schedule. Motion, please. Motion. Thank you. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Resolution number 26, 32724. Resolution scheduling a public hearing for 6 o'clock p.m. on April 24th, 2024 at Port Jefferson Village Hall, 121 West Broadway, Port Jefferson, New York, 11777, regarding a proposed local law amending Chapter 25, Country Club Management Advisory Council, Section 25-2A Composition of the Code of the Village of Port Jefferson. May I have a motion? Motion. Second. Thank you. Um, I'll just quickly discuss this for a second. Um, this is to um, codify that the Board of Governors, which was recently established in January, uh, that the president there is um, going to be an automatic, automatically included on the uh, CCMAC, as it was originally done before the Board of Governors was um, uh, repealed as part of the governance of the country club. And also, um, we need to look at the number of uh, members on the CCMAC as we've had several resignations and the operating uh, that this type of, uh, of a council uh, with 11 or 13 people on it can be more efficiently um, coordinated with less with less people. So that's kind of what the new um, what that resolution will will look like with explanation just in, as an FYI. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Resolution number 27, 32724. Resolution authorizing Treasurer Gafka to perform attached budget transfer number two to close out the Capitol Harbor Front Walkway project by decreasing appropriations in line item H8997605, Harbor Front Walkway Project 2023, by $15,093 and increasing appropriations in line item H9950.9, interfund transfer, by $15,093, and requesting that budget transfer number two be included as part of the minutes of the March 27, 2024, meeting of the Board of Trustees. May I have a motion? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Resolution number 28, 32724. Resolution authorizing Treasurer Gafka to perform attached budget amendment number 18, appropriating country club fund balance in the amount of $309,922.72 for the approved bunker rebuild bid as approved on February 28, 2024 to be expensed through line item CR 9901.09 into fund transfer and requesting that budget amendment number 18 be included as part of the minutes of the March 27, 2024 meeting of the Board of Trustees. May I have a motion? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Resolution number 29, 32724. Resolution authorizing Treasurer Gafka to perform attached budget amendment number 19, increasing capital fund appropriations for revenue line item H5031 interfund transfer by 
$1,922.72, and increasing appropriations for newly created expense line item H7197.21, PJCC capital improvements to golf course, by $309,922.72, and requesting that Budget Amendment 19 be included as part of the minutes of the March 27, 2024 meeting of the Board of Trustees. May I have a motion? Do we have a second? Three motions. Do we have one second? <laughs> I'll second. One second. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Resolution number 30, 32724. Resolution authorizing Treasurer Gafka to create a new capital fund expense account to be known as line item H5110.2, highway capital equipment. May I have a motion? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Resolution number 31, 32724. Resolution authorizing Treasurer Gafka to perform attached budget amendment number 20, increasing appropriations by $163,666 in capital fund line item H5031 interfund transfer and increasing appropriations by $163,666 in capital fund line item H5110.02 highway capital equipment to fund the previously recorded transfer of net parking meter fund revenue to the capital fund toward the purchase of the Rabo 5-1 street sweeper purchased with parking meter funds and requesting that budget amendment number 20 be included as part of the minutes of the March 27, 2024 meeting of the board of trustees. May I have a motion? Motion. Second. Question on that. So treasurer Gafka, this is can you explain how this is working what we're, we spent this money let pre previously and yes. now you're just transferring it from one to another fund one payment has been made towards the street sweeper when was uh, it purchased it was purchased last year mm -hmm. uh the payment was made in may we need to make another payment in may uh the money was supposed to be moved over to capital it was recorded that it was going to be moved over to capital and never made it over to capital. This is formalizing that process and setting the budget for the amounts uh, that were recorded to be moved over to capital. There will be additional monies that need to get moved over, but we'll approach that at a different date. Okay. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Resolution number 32, 32724. Resolution authorizing Treasurer Gafka to perform attached budget amendment number 21, recording the conversion of the East Beach Bluff ban to a serial bond by increasing appropriations by $275,000 in line item H5731, bans redeemed from appropriations, and by $4,725,000 in line item H5710, serial bond, and increasing appropriations by $5 million in capital expense H. 8997602 oh, Bluff Project and requesting that budget amendment number 21 be included as part of the minutes of the March 27th, 2024 meeting of the Board of Trustees. May I have a motion? Motion. Do we second. have a second? Second. Any discussion on that? Questions from anyone? So this is just converting the, bond, the bands to a bond. That's correct. It's also formalizing the recording process of the budget, um, albeit $200,000 short. Where's the 200,000 coming from? $275,000 short? No, so the entirety of the ban was 5.2 million. Uh, there was a payment made on the ban that was not made with appropriations from the general fund. It was just paid with cash. Uh, that will need to be appropriated with fund balance um, at a date. Um, I am going to be working with the capital auditors as to the appropriate actions that may need to be taken to fund that uh, in the right manner so that um, we can move forward and get the entire budget uh, appropriately accounted for in the capital fund. So do you understand why that 200000 was paid in cash? Do we know why? It had to do with the timing of the bond, uh, the ban itself, the borrowing. It was borrowed in April. Um, it was borrowed after the budget had already been voted on and approved for the next fiscal year. Uh, what should have happened is that general fund money should have been appropriated to pay 
uh, for the principal and interest payment. Uh, that did not happen. It was just paid. So uh, in essence, the general fund owes fund balance an amount of two hundred ninety nine thousand dollars. Okay. Okay. Um, all in favor of this? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Resolution number 33, 32724. Resolution authorizing Treasurer Gafka to create a new capital fund expense account to be known as line item H5110205, Highway Capital Paving Projects. May I have a motion? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Resolution number 34, 32724. Resolution authorizing Treasurer Gafka to perform attached budget amendment number 22, increasing appropriations by $115,270.30 in revenue line item A2770, miscellaneous revenues, to properly record the receipt of the National Grid paving contribution and increasing appropriations by $115,270.30 in expense line item A. 9950.9 interfund transfer and requesting that budget amendment 22 be included as part of the minutes of the March 27th 2024 meeting of the board of trustees may I have a motion motion second all in favor aye, aye. thank you resolution number 35 32724 resolution authorizing treasurer Gafka to perform attached budget amendment number 23 increasing appropriations by $115,000 $270.30 in revenue line item H5031 interfund transfer to move the national grid paving contribution to capital and increasing appropriations by $115,270.30 and expense line item H5110.205 highway capital paving projects and requesting that budget amendment number 23 be included as part of the minutes of the March 27, 2024 meeting of the board of trustees. May I have a motion? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Resolution number 36, 32724. Resolution authorizing Treasurer Gafka to perform attached budget amendment number 24, appropriating country club fund balance in the amount of $190,475.50 for the awarded sand, sod, and gravel bid as approved at the March 13th, 2024 work session meeting of the Board of Trustees and for the polymer irrigation and necessary supplies required for the bunker rebuild capital project to be expensed from line item CR9901.09 interfund transfer and requesting that budget amendment num number 24 be included as part of the minutes of the March 27, 2024 meeting of the Board of Trustees. May I have a motion? Motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Resolution number 37, 32724. Resolution authorizing Treasurer Gafka to perform attached budget amendment number 25, increasing appropriations in the capital fund revenue line item H5031 interfund transfer in the amount of $190,475.50 for the sod, sand, gravel, polymer, irrigation, and necessary supplies required for the bunker rebuild capital project and increasing appropriations in the capital fund expense line item H719721, Port Jefferson Country Club Capital Improvement to Golf Course in the amount of $190,000, excuse me, $190,475.50, and requesting that budget amendment number 25 be included as part of the minutes of the March 27, 2024 meeting of the Board of Trustees. May I have a motion? Motion. 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 Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Resolution number 38, 32724. Resolution approving the check register and warrants dated 32424 as presented by Treasurer Gafka and as approved by Claims Auditor Goodwin. May I have a motion? Motion. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Resolution number 40. Two, uh, excuse me. Resolution number 4032724. Resolution to close the March 27, 2024 meeting of the Board of Trustees at 9 20 p.m may i have a motion? motion motion do we have a second second nobody wants to close this meeting now nah, let's stay <laughs> all in favor aye. aye motion carries thank you